My friends, we are at a new beginning. As the Neo Saban era runs its course and Saban Brands closes its doors, Hasbro will now handle the Power Rangers legacy. Excitement in the fandom is at an all-time high, and the sky's the limit for creative potential. While I talked about how Hasbro can manage the legacy figures previously, today, I'll be doing the same for the show itself. I'm Julio Coolio, and here are the top 4 ways Hasbro can fix Power Rangers. Music is a medium that could connect to anything on a deep level. I'm going to go into my full synthesia phase to explain. Tokusatsu is a genre that mainly relies on visuals and writing, but music helps add some emotion to the scene. Whether we're watching an intense fight, a beloved character's death, or an emotional self-discovery moment, the music can help convey the message in an auditory format. This even applies to silent films of the 1920s, where enjoyment came from the wacky movements and the music. Insert songs, sung by a band or the actors, will often be used in Togu to convey the emotions of a certain character, or the power of a new form. Power Rangers used to do this for the first six years, defining the fight scenes with energetic rock songs such as Invincible, 541, Go Green Ranger, etc. That kind of music helped the fight scenes captivate the attention of little kids all over the world. Even seasons afterwards that mainly relied on instrumental scores had some pretty good songs. Ever since the beginning of the Neo Saban era, the main composer has been Noam Kniel. While he has made some memorable tunes in and outside of Power Rangers, sadly most of the music he composes lacks emotion or feels like you could get it in the public domain. Our friends. They're solid stone. It doesn't deepen the character's emotions or intensify situation. It's just background noise so the actors' voices aren't the only things you can hear. Heck, maybe the actors constantly talk over the fight so that the little kids won't realize how boring the music is. Tell me who kept you on that ship! You wanna know who? That's for me to know! And you to never find out! Don't get me wrong, he's an okay singer. He's just not that good at composing. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I'm not asking Hasbro to get someone like John Williams to write the music for Power Rangers, but I hope that they try to convey at least some energy into the music for this action show. There's a fan-made theme for Beast Warfers roaming around the internet, and many people love it for going back to the style of energetic rock I mentioned earlier. I would be happy if this were the official theme, but it probably won't be to the rights or whatever. But if they really want to win audiences back, get Ron Wasserman. He left the bomb because of how the company treated him, but maybe he'll change his mind like David Yost if a creator respecting company like Hasbro owns the series. He can still do great music, as seen in Fight Back, a Power Rangers inspired single released years ago. Power Rangers fans want to hear actual music again after 8 years, not just background noise. If Power Rangers is to become great again, we need to start at the little things that can help people say, hey, this is pretty cool. Remember that for later, it's going to become a big point in this video. With any long-running series, it's important to maintain connections to the past to assure the viewers that this is the same show. Sometimes continuity can get too complex and alienate new audiences, but it can also provide a sense of world-building and depth if done right. The Zordon era was a prime example of Power Rangers continuity at its best. 
The writers manage to turn six Japanese shows that were for the most part standalone and combine them into a continuous story. They had to get creative even with footage that seemed impossible to mesh together. The Disney era, where continuity was originally meant to be eliminated, often had subtle references to past seasons. Let me give some examples. Power Rangers are very well known in Ninja Storm, even if they are thought of to be just comic books. Dino Thunder was essentially a modernization of Mighty Morphin, with some thrown in references in Ninja Storm. Jack in SPD mentions that a training requirement is to read about Tommy Oliver. Not to mention that the new Dino Gems came from the planet Onyx from in space. Piggy and Phineas have a conversation in Mystic Force about how aliens will roam the Earth in 20 years, alluding to SPD. The armor for the Overdrive Rangers was made from one of Fireheart's scales. RJ from Jungle Fury mentions that he had a friend help him harness the Morphing Grid and build the Morphers. A past ranger, perhaps? And RPM, the season that takes place in a post-apocalyptic dimension, had an appearance by Jungle Karma Pizza and references its own version of the Morphing Grid. While all these references are minuscule, they assure the viewer that all these seasons take place within the same continuity unless otherwise stated. However, the Neo Saban season seemed to have largely ignored continuity with previous seasons altogether, similar to how each Super Sentai show seems to be in its own universe. The closest thing we get is in Dino Charge, where people mention various times how Power Rangers are well-known heroes, similar to Ninja Storm. We all know of the obvious references to Power Ranger seasons within Go Busters. The synopsis of Beast Morphers also makes reference to the Morphing Grid and its connection to the American version of Enertron, Morph X. If the plot is directly tied to the Morphing Grid, I could say some progress is being done. Heck, you could have a scene where they mention another ranger team in passing glance, say that the Zords were made using technology from previous Zords, or have one of the new rangers be the child of an older ranger. There's so many ways you can reference the past without needing to fly out guest stars to New Zealand. If Brian Golder truly wants to unlock the full potential of the franchise like he has said during interviews, Reminding the audience that Power Rangers is an expansive universe is the first step. You think you're the only superhero in the world? Mr. Stark, you become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. <laughs>